Welcome back to another edition of the Giant Subtle Podcast brought to you by PSENG. Energy efficiency for game time and anytime. Visit PSEG.com slash Giants for rebates, home energy assessments, and more. Joining us right now is Matt Miller from ESPN. You see him on NFL Live for coverage of the draft all weekend long on the mothership. Matt, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing well, man. It's a, a, a tradition at this point, you and I to hang out, talk at the Combine. So it's good to see you again, number one. But yeah, things are going well. It's, it's been a fun week. You know, we're just getting started. But I, I, I've had a blast so far just watching the workouts yesterday, seeing how fast the defensive line and <laughs> linebacker groups were is – I'm still like a kid in a candy store at the Combine where watching those guys work out, I still I get excited. Yeah, you me know, too. like watching them run and, you know, to see to see Will Anderson and, and, you know, so many great players 20 feet in front of you working out is, for me, it's still like a dream come true. So I still appreciate these moments. Yeah, Matt's probably been joining us for more than 10 years now. Back I think this is my 13th Combine. 13th Combine. I'm old. That's awesome, I'm old. man. Yeah. And, of course, we'll try to get Matt on again before the draft too. Um, let's go here first. Uh, who do you think – really helped themselves at the workouts yesterday. You know, Tommy Adebaware, he worked out with the ends. Yeah. He's a 280 pound tackle and I feel like his like sub 4 5 is getting lost in the shuffle here. I agree. Which is and his overall workout like his change of direction combined with his 34 inch arms when he got measured, right. natural leverage. I mean, he's he's rocked up if you just see him. Mm-hmm. Like Tell me, I haven't dug into his tape yet. So you tell me, why shouldn't he be in the mix at the end of the first round? I don't know that he's not. Okay. I'll, I'll say that. So during the season, I had him labeled as, you know, hey, this is a tweener. You know, he's probably going to play five technique and out, but he's 286 pounds and he's six foot two. So he was a player where you watch the tape and you see how they use him and you get some ideas. But then I saw him at the senior bowl thought okay Monster. well senior bowl he's playing more true almost defensive end with you know some kicking inside a little bit and then this week it almost confirms you know what you saw on tape what we saw in mobile and so for me it's that you like each step of the process you see a player wow you and impress so I think it is a fair question why can't he be in the mix at the end of the first round if you're the Philadelphia Eagles or the Kansas City Chiefs and you don't have a lot of needs per se why wouldn't you draft a player like that? Like, you know what? Hey, we'll we'll find a use for someone who moves like that, especially with the, the first step quickness and the explosiveness. Who else do you think really helped themselves yesterday? You know, this is going to shock you, but Will Anderson, I know that's like, oh, he's the first player in the draft. I, yes. So, no, his stock didn't go up. But to me, the statement that he made yesterday by working out as the presumptive number one player in the draft, I think says a lot about his character of, hey, I'm a competitor. I'm a leader. I'm going to work out. And, you know, for him, it's probably like I was saying, where like you've dreamed of this moment since you were a little kid and now you're here. So even though I'm sure everyone in his team was like, you know, well, you don't have to work out. And he's like, you know, no, I'm going to. I'm going to work out. So because he didn't have to. And he didn't have to, no. but he worked out and looked good. I mean, he was taking it. It looked like it was the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, those workouts. Yeah. I mean, he was, to me, it was that confirmation of this is why I have believed in this player for two years now. So that was great to see. I thought Lucas Van Ness from Iowa had a great workout. He just looks like an NFL player. He, he does. I mean, the arm length, the, you know, the, the stature, the build, everything's there. But for a player who was never a starter at Iowa, I mean, he, and he, he looked so good and he looked good. And you know, he did some pass drops and looked good. Yeah. He looked natural catching the ball. It's just, I think you see the overall ability of someone like Van Ness, where you understand how you can go from being a rotational guy at Iowa, albeit he did play a lot, but that's why he's been talked about as a, a potential top 15 pick. Yeah, no question about it. All right, let's jump to the wide receivers. Uh, we're recording this on Friday morning, the receivers and everybody are talking to the media. Your take on the crop, and when we do have the workouts for the receivers on Saturday, who do you think will eventually help themselves? I think a lot of people have said this. It's not the greatest wide receiver class ever. We were also spoiled with wide receiver talent. Oh, my goodness. Especially last year, you know, the year before that. So, you know, there's not a Jamar Chase in this class. There's not a Drake London. There's probably not a Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave. But there are still good wide receivers in this class. I'm a fan of Jackson Smith and Jigba, and I understand the argument that he, you know, got hurt only caught five passes this past year, only had 43 yards receiving. But, you know, in that last game he played before that, the Rose Bowl game against Utah, he had like a half a season's worth of catches in that one game. So his production, I'm okay with. It, to me, it's just he's he does everything well. You know, he's just all around polished. I'm a big fan of Jordan Addison from USC as well. I mean, he's smaller, shifty, great vertical speed. I probably mean, not getting to the Giants at 25. Probably though, not. Right? I'm sorry. Hey, probably not. Nah, no, I, I think you guys, I mean, at 25, 
even though this is not a great wide receiver class, you're realistically looking at probably the third or fourth wide receiver. Right. So who is that guy? Maybe Quentin Johnston, you know, from TCU. Maybe it's Jalen Hyatt from Tennessee. Could it be Smith and Jigba, depending on what he runs at his pro day? I think what he runs at his pro day, since he's not doing the 40 right. here, he's going to do all the other workouts here. But I also think with, with JSN, a lot of it's going to be, why did you not play this year? It Was the hamstring that much of a problem? If the hamstring's that much of a problem, how much of a problem is it going to be going forward? Or, and we've seen this happen in the past where guys get hurt who are presumptive, very high draft picks, and you say, like, hey, you know what? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow it down a little bit. I'm not, I don't know, you know, it, maybe it was a legit injury all year, but I think that's pro- really the biggest question I have about him right now is if the hammy was bad enough to keep you up for that long, how is it going to be moving forward? Is he a slot only guy? Because I'm trying to find a guy that fits into what the Giants need here. They have that big possession guy in Isaiah Hodgins, they have yeah. the inside shifty guy in Wondell Robinson. Then they kind of that do everything outside mm-hmm. threat couldn't Jigba be that guy and if not maybe not first round day two who are some of the guys you like that could fit that receiver type that Brian Dable likes that separator that can just get open at all so I think he is that you know that outside guy you know that can be your separator to me JSN is just such a clean route runner you know it's that's his process is he's not the biggest guy he's not the right. fastest guy but he's always open and that's what I love about his game to where I think my comparison for him was CD Lamb you know he's not going to run by you in terms of straight line speed but he's shifty he's crafty he's just you know he's a quarterback's best friend I kind of thought almost like a Michael Thomas type too I know he doesn't not as have big. quite the size as right. Michael Thomas does, yeah. but he gets open the same way absolutely you know and he's not as fast as Justin Jefferson but right. kind of of like that as well which is a lofty comparison to make right but I, I do think he could be that player I will say I think there's a fall off this year especially there are a lot of small guys a lot of those you know slot Endless only five, guys nine, five, ten of right players, you yeah, know there's crazy. Zay Flowers there's Josh Downs, Downs. there's Jalen Hyatt who we mentioned there's a lot of players who don't fit necessarily what you would expect at least for Dable and Shane to look at as hey who's that third receiver for us who's going to fit that role well you love Brian Dable. Yeah, love Brian. He, he's one of your guys. So what do you think he'll be looking for here to help either the team or the offense specifically kind of take that next step and help build around Daniel Jones a little bit? I mean, I think it's easy to say they want, you know, hey, we need a Stephon Diggs kind of guy. But well, you yeah. really kind of need a Stephon Diggs kind of guy. Like I think you everyone kind of you know, needs right. Stephon so, Diggs type of guy. <laughs> but I think you need the, the player that when everything's going wrong, you know that's where you're going. You know, Kansas City has it with Travis Kelsey. Philly has it with A.J. Brown. Buffalo has it with Stephon Diggs. You know, the great offenses have that guy. And so I think, again, that's simplifying things. That player might not even exist in this draft class is the hard part. So I think, you know, I I would bet on traits. I think someone like Rasheed Rice from SMU has definitely flashed at times to where— We'll see how he runs. We'll see how he runs. That's the big thing. So that's why, you know, he might be available at the end of the second round because he might not run well, but his tape is really good, and he has a ton of production. So I think, I mean, that's a name that I would kind of put in that mold of someone that fits— at least the, the prototypes of what you want at that position. Could that player be a tight end? You know, you mentioned Travis yes. Kelsey. Yes, it uh, can we, be. I, I just listened to Kincaid in there who, you know, you watch him on tape. He's yeah. a heck of a route runner. Could the Giants, do you think, go tight end in that first round? Or do you think it's better? Oh, maybe Laporta is sitting there at the end of round two. How, how would you kind of put that into the mix strategy-wise? I do feel like that the game, because of guys like Travis Kelsey and George Kittle and Mark Andrews, has changed enough to where your tight end can be your number one receiver. You know, I mean, we're seeing it. We're seeing teams be really good with it as well. Uh, so, I yes, it could be. Dalton Kincaid is a fantastic run-after-catch tight end. You know, I mentioned Kittle. There's some Kittle to what Kincaid does as a receiver, not as a blocker, but as a receiver. So I think that could definitely be intriguing. Same for Michael Mayer. You know, if you want a middle-of-the-field target, he's not going to be that explosive yak guy like a Kincaid or a Luke Musgrave from Oregon State, but someone that's just going to be your your safety valve. He has some Jason Witten to him a little bit, I went TJ Hawkinson. Okay, that's good, too. You know, I didn't want to go Hall of Famer. Fair enough, fair enough, um, fair enough. Yeah, but I, I think it's... A pro, you know, a classic inline tight end who's probably going to run like a mid four six or low four seven, but is always open. Yeah, no question about it. And I think when you look at Joe Shane's history in Buffalo too, right, and what they did up there, they were constantly picking defensive linemen up front yes. early in the draft. Yeah. So we started talking about the Northwestern kid. What other defensive linemen? And, he, and Joe Shane talked a lot about the other day trying to 
get another player beside Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams, and Williams on the last year of his contract too, we'll see if yeah. they extend them or not. Who are some of the guys that could fit into that scheme and system that Wink runs that could be available at the end of the first round there? Yeah, again, it's, it's a weird year where the, the talent doesn't necessarily match your guys' needs. You know, there's a huge drop-off from Jalen Carter to Brian Brzee from Clemson, who would probably actually fit that spot. I think there's, there's questions there too this past year. You know, he dealt with some personal uh, tragedy with the passing away of his sister due and to the brain cancer, too, yeah. the kidney infection. And then the year before that, he tore his ACL. So we really haven't seen a healthy Brian Brzee since really his freshman season. So uh, if you believe you can you know, get him back to where he was uh, you know, post-injury, post-kidney infection, then he certainly would fit that. And I think his, you know, he looked very good in the workouts on Thursday night. So I think he's a player that, yeah, probably starts to fit into that late first, early second round. Do you see him as a three technique? Do you see him as a five? How, you know, Wing Warndale likes to play the, yeah. that positionless defense. How do you think he fits? I think he's probably more of a one-gap penetrator, I think he's more right? one-gap, yeah, yeah, absolutely. To me, yeah, I think, I don't know that he has the quicks for three technique. Not off what we saw last year. He right. doesn't have the quicks. So, again, you like, who is this guy right now? I would say body type and quickness is more five technique. All right, Giants also need a linebacker here. Yeah. I don't know if one's going to go in the first round. You yeah. tell me if you think that's different. I think Sanders looked pretty good yesterday in the he field did. drills. He did. Um, I thought Campbell, even though his you know his initial 40 time didn't look great when they put out the official, it looked better. Right. Especially for a guy that size. Could he get to the Giants' second-round pick so in the I think, 50s? I think so. I, you're right. The, the linebackers this year, if one goes in the first, it'll probably be the late first. Trenton Simpson from Clemson is, is tearing it up right now. He's just He turned in 25 reps on the bench right before we sat down. So oh, he's had he really? a great wow. great workout for him. Uh, I, I love Drew Sanders. He would be great for what you guys need, especially someone who can be that versatile defensive chess piece. I mean, he had like four sacks, three forced fumbles, an interception while leading the team in tackles last year at Arkansas, former Alabama player. So, you know, there's a high pedigree there, right, to, to be on Nick Saban's defense. So I think Sanders would fit. He's probably not going to make it all the way back around. But I, I do that. Jack Campbell certainly interesting. Dan Henley from Washington State, a little bit on the shorter side compared to yeah, Drew guy, Sanders, who's move, like man. six foot Ooh. five. But he can absolutely move, and he's versatile. We've seen him rush. We've seen him cover. He also looks really, really, really good, excuse me, in drills. I know as many as six, maybe more corners can go in the first round. Yeah. Matt, how many are going to be left when the Giants get to 25, first of all? And yeah. who fits that Wink Martindale you know, press man scheme? Yeah, I think there will be a couple left. Uh, press man this year is a little bit different because the guys like Emmanuel Forbes, he weighed 173 pounds. He had six picks last year. He's a really good player, but... Do you really want him out there, you know, pressing A.J. Brown? I don't. And like the that. Giants already drafted Cordell Flott last year. That was right. 160-something right. pounds. So I look at guys <laughs> like Deontay Banks at Maryland, who is 6'2", 200-plus. He's going to run in the probably the 4'2s, low 4'3s. To me, like that, the tape, the, the body style, the metrics say press man. My sleeper, I think he's going to do really well here, is D.J. Turner from Michigan. The tape's not always great, but everything I've heard is he's going to fly here, and he has played that press man at Michigan, so it's, he's used to doing that. Where are you on the Kaylee Ringo train? Because that train is I don't want him playing press man. I know that. I don't want him playing press man. I, I'm i a fan of his. As he's, the, he has the traits where he, like, he should traits. be able to do it. I can't get the Ohio State game out of my no, head, though. I mean, And it's you know rough. what? Marvin Harrison beats up a lot of people, but he, he had a rough game, and I think that game really – uh, you know, kind of brought to light some struggles that are just on his tape as a as a man coverage player. Now, if you wanted to run cover three, yeah, let's put Keely Ringo out there. You know, running a four two at two hundred fifteen pounds, six foot two. Let him react and drive on the right. ball. Right, absolutely. Yeah. That's where he's at his best. When he has to put his back to the ball, bad things are going to happen. So uh, maybe you put him at free safety. You know, maybe that's the answer. But it's it's easy to fall in love with those traits and say. Gosh, can we coach that up? Just like we talk about with the quarterbacks. Yeah. Fall in love with those traits. Can we coach it up? Interior offensive line, another need for the Giants here. Yeah. I don't – do you think at 25? It doesn't feel it like – feels a, early. And it doesn't feel like a Joe Shane pick either. He's a guy that really yeah. values positional value. So if you're looking at, you know, round – Two, three, maybe even round four. Who are some of the interior offensive linemen that you think could be plug-and-play type guys? I think John Michael Schmitz, the center from Minnesota. We, we saw him bump around a little bit at the Senior Bowl. He's absolutely plug-and-play to me. Not sure he gets to the 50s, though. Maybe not. Joe Tipman from Wisconsin would probably be the next option of somebody who – you know, can can execute that scheme. You know, he's athletic enough to pull, he's athletic enough to trap, handles himself really well at the second level. 
I, it's it's a weak interior offensive line class. I know I keep saying that about all your guys' needs. It hadn't dawned on me until we got here that <laughs> the Giants' needs do not match the talent in this class necessarily. So um, interior O-line is rough. I think that's where you're, you're digging to find guys that you think could be year one starters. Now, there are certainly guys that could be year two, year three starters, but it is a, a weak group of guard. We're, we'll probably see Osiris Torrance going the late first, early second. We might not see another guard until day three. How many first-round grades do you have? On players overall? Yeah. Uh, like 15, 16 right now. Is I, that low for you usually or is that's that in about the neighborhood? average, but I feel like uh, just to be transparent, I think there's some reaches this year where you, you're you bringing guys up. You know, traditionally, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, I probably wouldn't give a first-round grade to, but you're pulling them up because of Josh Allen, because of no, even Daniel it. Jones, the turnaround he made last year. Yeah. You know, you're, you're looking at traits and football character and football IQ and saying, okay, I, that guy can become the next – Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Daniel Jones in 2022. So I, I do think, yeah, we're, we're probably creating some first-round grades this year. Where are the drop-offs? Like, if when do you get out of that first tier, and then how big is that second group? Where at 25, does it make sense for the Giants to trade back if that next group is really that big? It, it Honestly, might this might be the year to trade back, and, and we'll see what's on the board if anybody wants to trade up even at that of point. Course. So I think the drop-off this year – there's there are players that I know I've talked to a scout about this that I have a second round grade on this one player that I really like and the, uh, the team has a fourth round grade man and it's, it's so like I feel like second to fourth round is it's just like 100 players in that group you know that everybody's just like yeah you know like they're good but are they are they that good so that's kind of where we're at this year where I think you know a lot of guys went back to school because of NIL money a lot of people came out last year we're getting a lot of the you know, some of the guys who were COVID years of it made more sense for them to go back to college for another year and develop. We're getting those guys this year. And so I think that's why we see a big draft class that's kind of watered down on talent. Yeah, f finally, I don't want to kill the class because you can always find good players, right? And Absolutely. And all very talented kids yeah. great players. But it does seem like this probably compared to the last few years is probably one of the weaker overall classes we've seen. And no right? matter how you feel about the class, you still have to draft the players. Of course. You know, you're not going to you're not gonna punt all your picks because you don't love the class, right? So that's where the job of your area scouts is so important is to find those guys. Hey, find me the talent, the guys that can fit in our scheme or the players who have traits that we can develop. So you're absolutely right. You know, and I, I've covered the 2013 draft that people hated on, the 2019 draft that people hated on. There are a lot of really good starters in the NFL from those classes. Yeah, and they might not be in the first 20 picks, right? Absolutely. You go back to the 2013 draft, the second round picks almost Much had better. more success than the first round yeah, picks. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, that's the fun part of the job is finding those guys who are not – First rounders, they're not the stars we're talking about on NFL Live, but they're the guys who come Super Bowl Sunday. You're talking about a Trey Smith who is a day three pick, or a Creed Humphrey who is a second round pick, and you're realizing, or Andrew Wiley who is a UDFA, and you're talking about how valuable they are yeah. to a Super Bowl winning team. Matt, what are you up to this week? What should we keep an eye on? How do you feel on, on <laughs> running, the ESPN? Running, running. Uh, <laughs> that's all I'm doing this week. So a uh, lot of NFL Live. We're doing two hour shows. Are you running the forty? Is that what you're saying? No, God, okay. no, no. <laughs> Those days are long gone. I would, I would be like JSN with a bad hand string if that if I tried to do that we'll let Rich Eisen run the 40 no one else needs to but no it's it's going to be a, a big week productive week we're doing combine primers on ESPN.com every yes. night like last night they came out I, like right when the workout ended it was available so if you are starting to like you know heat up talking about the draft thing and about the draft we definitely have a ton of content out there Matt we'll talk to you later in the process sounds good, good buddy man. thank you Matt Miller ESPN thank you for joining us in the Giants Auto Podcast brought to you by PSCNG we'll see you next time